ladies and gentlemen, I'm standing at this time with Joel. Uh, how do you want to? You want me to announce it, Joel? What? Well, well, well. It is I, the quintessential stud muffin, Joel. You may not know what I'll say. You may have no idea what I'll do, but I'm gonna make sure to get it done in this interview. And I'm gonna keep it clean. And I'm not gonna make it dirty. But your girlfriend likes it a lot when I'm being kind of flirty. Sure. You still got it. Thank you, man. I wanted to ask you, you before you went into the business, especially in ECW, you were a student at uh, Princeton? I mean, Cornell. 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 In, uh, in, in New York, yeah. Yeah, what were you studying? Gosh, I was taking up space. They didn't really have what I wanted. I think a lot of the stuff there that I was interested in was extracurricular. Uh, I was uh, the sports director at the radio station. Uh, I did a lot of public address for about seven or eight different Cornell athletic teams. Uh, and I was on the Cornell Concert Commission when it came to promoting. But as far as the in-class curriculum, it really didn't mesh with the TV radio stuff that I wanted to do. So I took a lot of psychology. I took Japanese. I took linguistics. A whole bunch of cool stuff. Uh, but I wound up leaving after three years and going full-time with ECW. And did you ever go back and complete the so I did. I did two more years at um, Brooklyn College. So it took five years to get the standard four-year bachelor's degree. Uh, but I have one of those in TV radio. What was it like entering the ECW locker room with all those personalities and talent in that time? Was it 1995? 1995? Yeah, no, it was. It was September of 95 when I started. Uh, it was a blast, man. I started three days after my 20th birthday. Uh, I started on the same day as um, Bubba Ray Dudley, who at that time was bodyguard Mongo for Fonzie, uh, and also the same day as superstar Steve Austin. Uh, so uh, it was a great time to start, and uh, and yeah, man, ECW was a blast. Five, five and a half years. And you played an integral part in the Dudley Boys' career. You were a great ring announcer for them. Yeah, you, you added the comedy element to them, and they were the ones that were brought in, bringing so much heat on them. Yeah, right? yeah. yeah we, we didn't even have ring music, you know, in a company where music was so pivotal and where the soundtrack is so talked about, you know, even now where, you know, you watch the network. Some people are like, that's not the original music. It is for us because we didn't have any music. You know, we came through the curtain and the first thing you heard was well, well, well. And then it was me and Bubba just chopping up the crowd. Now, a lot of people, is, it, is the Vic Reese a trip with the bow tie? Is that a tribute to Bobby Heenan? I mean, in my mind, it kind of is. Um, it, you know, so in real life, it kind of could be uh, as far as the storyline, uh, as far as episodic, um, it's actually attributed to me taking total elimination from the Eliminators at the first pay-per-view. And for whatever reason, never quite getting over it. Yeah, that was a big bump. I remember that. Like that. Yeah, crazy. But uh, last question. Um, you, you were there until the end of ECW when they closed his doors. Yeah. How, when did you find out? How did you feel when, when ECW uh, shut his doors? It was sad. And, you know, that for me, I mean, ECW was my big break. And ECW was the only place that I had worked to that point because I was going to stay loyal to them and be with the ship until it went down. So I'm not, you know, we, there were a lot of ECW stars that, let's say, had come from WWF, had come from WCW, and even they loved it in ECW. They loved the locker room atmosphere. They loved the ambiance. They loved their created input, everything about it. I didn't have anything to compare ECW to. That was the entire, you know, the highlight of the nuts and bolts of my wrestling career. So it was, you know, it was certainly devastating to an extent. It was very emotional, um, absolutely. Um, and yeah, it was, you know, again, just a great five, five and a half years. Did you ever consider going to WWE? Did you ever hear of that following the ECW uh, when they left? Um, I, I was all, I had, a, I had spoken with somebody there. Um, there was an offer made. So there was, I think, as on their personality? Yeah, so or? There was one or one or two opportunities between 95 and 01. Uh, most of it in the latter half of that, when I was already either TNN, close to TNN, under contract, close to under contract. So let's say from 99 to 01, there was a chance or two where I could have perhaps left ECW at least short term and gone somewhere else. Uh, did I ever seriously consider it? Uh, not really, no. The, the opportunities were, you know... You had a lot of creative freedom in ECW. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I had no reason to leave. You know, you, you had Paul Heyman who, with WCW, you know, he was this young 20-something color commentator, this young manager, and he's working with guys like he's managing Rick Rude, right? And 
now the product that he's in charge of. He puts me on his TV. Now I'm the young 20s color commentator and co-host. Now I'm doing point counterpoint with Rick Rude. And where Paul Lee earlier in his career had managed Boston Idol, the universal heart throb, now he's giving me the moniker quintessential stud muffin as a tribute to Austin Idol. You know, so I, it was, it, I would have needed a legitimate and very, very good substantial reason to ever leave ECW. And at the time, I wasn't, I thought, given one, or at least I wasn't given anything that I might not again be offered in the future. So I stayed with ECW until here. Joel Burton, everybody, thank you so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you.